is Dean McDonald from TechSkills. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a wireless access point to an existing wired network. And then I'll show you some security settings, including configuring WEP, WPA, and MAC address filtering on both the WAP and also on a Windows XP client. Let's get started. Here's two examples of wireless access points. This one is just an access point. So this one only provides wireless access through the wireless antenna and then it has one ethernet port to connect to a, an existing wired network. This one is a wireless access point. It also has a router and a four port switch. So if you take a look at the back of these devices, this one has one ethernet port for the LAN connection, has a power connection. It also has a reset button. You can set it back to the factory settings. This device has a WAN port, so this would connect to a broadband network or any other uh, wide area network. And this one has a four port switch. One of these ports is an uplink switch. And it has a power connector. This one also has a reset switch, so if we want to set it back to the factory specs, uh, we can hit the reset switch and reset it back to the factory settings. Here is the network configuration. Currently have a broadband router has a four port switch. This is the default gateway for the network. Use the IP address 192.168.1.1. This is connected to the internet via a DSL modem. I'm going to be adding a wireless access point. It will use the IP address 192.168.1.245. Currently have one client on the network. Has a wired connection with the IP address 192.168.1.100 and I will be adding a wireless interface which will use the IP address 192.168.1.200. So all devices on this network will use a static IP address. I could use DHCP, but for this network scenario, I'm going to use just static IP addresses and static TCP IP settings. Adding the wireless access point to my current wired network is relatively straightforward. Plug one end of a patch cable into the WAP. The other end just gets plugged into the router, one of the switches on the router. This gray cord plugs into the WAP. This yellow cord is connected to the client that's on the network, and this red cord goes to the DSL modem. So adding a wireless access point to a, an existing wired network is as simple as plugging a patch cable from the WAP into one of the ports on the switch. I've connected the wireless access point to the broadband router using a standard Ethernet patch cable. Now I need to connect to the wireless device using a web browser and then I can make my configuration settings. To connect to it, I need to type in the IP address of the device. In this case it's 192.168.1.245. First thing I'm required to do is authenticate to the WAP by default this uses a blank username and the password of admin each wireless device will be different but they will all have a default access setting so one of the first things you need to do is change the password so I'll add a new secure password and then save those settings once the settings are saved generally close the browser, reopen it, and then I'll have to reconnect to that IP address. And this time I have to add my new password. So that's one of the first things you should do. You should always change the default password. Now that I've changed the administrative password, the next thing I'm going to change is the security set identifier or SSID. The SSID is basically the name of the wireless device or the wireless network. So this is what clients will use to connect to when they configure their wireless settings. Each device will have a default setting. In this case, this one happens to be called Linksys. I'll change this to Test Lab. It's a good idea to choose a unique SSID. I have seen clients that plug in multiple devices and use the default settings. This can cause a problem if you have two network devices that are in close proximity that use the same SSID you can cause a conflict and it can cause all sorts of network configuration problems. So it's a good idea to choose a SSID that's unique and that's not going to be used by anybody else in the same area. A couple of other settings we can set on this screen is I can choose whether I will allow only wireless G devices or B devices or both. 
In this case, I'm going to have a mix of G and B devices, so I'll leave that as mixed. And then I can also set a wireless channel. In this case, it defaults to 6. I'll leave it as the default. Then we can change our SSID broadcast. We can enable or disable. This allows us to specify whether we want to our wireless device to broadcast the name or the SSID. It's not necessarily a security feature, but if you want to disable it, that will eliminate casual browsers from being able to connect to your network. Anybody that wants to connect will have to know the SSID. In this case, I'll just leave it enabled so we can see the, the default setting. Now that I've configured the SSID, I'll save that setting. Now any wireless clients that will connect will see that name as one of the wireless networks in the area. Save the settings and then close the browser. This is the wireless network card I'm going to be installing. This one happens to be a USB. It's made by Linksys. has an antenna and a USB connection. So pretty easy to install. Just connect this to a USB port, install device drivers, uh, and then you can use Windows XP uh, wireless configurations to configure our settings. Now the wireless access point has an SSID assigned. We've secured it with the admin password, but we haven't made any encryption or security settings as far as the wireless connection. So I'm going to connect my wireless network interface card. Once this is connected, I can make configuration settings. One of the first things I'll need to do is set the static IP address. So once Windows detects the device, it will put an icon down here in the notification area. I can right click this notification area and then I'll open up the network connection so we can make some configuration settings. The so first thing I need to do is set the TCP IP settings. In this case, this device is going to use a static IP address of 192.168.1.200. It will use a Class C default subnet mask and the default gateway if you remember for our network was 192.168.1.1. Our router will also perform DNS for this network so we'll configure that IP address as our preferred DNS server. Save those settings. So now our wireless network configuration is using a static IP address and then now we can connect to wireless networks. So if I right click the wireless connection click view available wireless networks we can see the list of available wireless networks some of these happen to be secured this one our test lab is unsecured at the moment double click here it's telling me hey test lab is not a secure network are you sure you want to be able to connect I'll just connect here so you can see what happens if you connect to an unsecured network So it's connected to our test lab wireless access point using that SSID. Shows the connection as connected. So now down here our wireless access point, we do a mouse over it, shows that it has a speed of 54 megabits per second, signal strength is excellent, and status is connected. To test this connection, I'll disable the wired connection once that's disabled, the only connection I'm using is the wireless connection. Open up a web browser and see if we can configure or make any connections to the internet. So that test proves that we're able to connect just using the wireless connection. So now we have a basic wireless connection. Now we want to be able to secure this. We don't want anybody snooping on our network. We want to make sure that we have an encrypted signal between our computer and the wireless access point. So we'll configure some security settings.